Hello YouTube and welcome back to my YouTube channel here today. Today we're going to be reacting to episode 28 of Free Run Beyond Journey's End, the season finale of which? The finale of season 1 everybody, how exciting is that? Listen, I'm saying season 1 because this show is well liked enough and well reviewed enough, clearly, to be getting a season 2. You would think at some point, right? I will be back, I will be watching more Free Run at some point. Um barring polls and that kind of thing. Anyway, we're way too far ahead. I've still got to watch this episode. And just because I can't go one comment section without a bunch of caveats, uh, sorry if I'm tired. I just worked 10 hours and I've had a coffee. So if that coffee wears off and I'm like dying, then don't be alarmed. I'm not actually dying. Just inside all the time. <laughs> The other thing is the video is probably late, so apologies there, but who else is going to put a bunch of Easter eggs on a shelf if it isn't me? So, <laughs> anyway, Cerberus, first comment here, which I should get up the comments because I, I normally do the comments, but I didn't get them up yet. Hello, Cerberus. Essentially, this comment goes into a few predictions and that kind of thing. Apparently not a manga slash light novel reader, and just kind of predicting who will pass and who will potentially fail. And I guess this will lead into a few of my personal predictions about who passes and fails as well. Um, I believe Yubel will pass, um, as Cerberus does here as well. She's pretty special. She's got a pretty banging character design too, so you wouldn't let that pass up, as well as... She, she has. It seems like her story hasn't even really started yet. We don't know much backstory. We don't know what her goals and aspirations are. Why she wants to pursue this license. Maybe this will be get revealed this episode. It's unclear. Um, she, you wouldn't write fiction like this. You wouldn't write fiction unless you're Nisio Sin. <laughs> you wouldn't write fiction to the point where you set up a character to do something and then they just don't do it. Similar feelings here on Dankin. I think he will pass. He is probably the best next mage there. So he's got a lot of talent there. Same deal as Yubel, I believe, has plot stuff to go. He has a dead wife. He has an arc that he needs to conclude. He was also one of the main characters of the previous arc we've just done. Makes sense for him to pass. And I'm on the fence with you, Cerberus. I'm on the fence with Matode. I don't know if she's going to be the passing type of character or maybe just slightly doesn't pass. She's shown herself to be really capable, though, so would not surprise me. Maybe just a pass and then kind of character we don't see again. Just somebody for a little bit of world building that's also strong that we know of. Next comment here from Matt. More about Yubel and specifically the relation there to Siri. Uh, two characters that are strongly associated with intuition. With Ziri apparently having perfect intuition, Yubel uses intuition, not logic, to fuel her magic. Like it's intuitive to cut through the dude, right? Remember the dude with the, with the cloak? Um... It was intuitive to think that I have scissors power, I will cut through it. It is not logical as it pertains to magic. And this whole test right now is based off intuition, right? Um, and Ziri being a little bit of a slave to her own intuition in a lot of ways as well. Either way, I'm sure that this conversation will be somewhere in this episode, or the results of which, and then we see the conversation later. It's something like that. We will get... a. Uh, something here i think and as always i love compliments so thank you for the compliments there next comment here from clay proof i feel like Ziri's frustrations with freerun is on some level based on her wish for freerun to rise to her level and become a peer friend colleague being alone in a position of power can be very lonely i imagine and all the promising humans keep dying such as um what was his name last week learning um yeah seems to be very talented but is close to death well Relatively, he's still, he's still kicking, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, I want a friend. There's not many elves left. There's not many that are really good at magic left. Be friend with me? <laughs> Maybe that's what she wants here um, on some level, yeah. Again, Sandra is a very above-it-all character, right? Having somebody that was equally above it all and pushing her on and blah, 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 is probably a motivation there. That's pretty astute, I think. A lot of comments about Siri here today with uh, Sal uh, chiming in as well. Um, I don't know how to feel about Siri. There's stuff there, but I need to let the show cook more. Well, there's only one episode left, so I don't know how much more they can cook. Um, she clearly is important and will continue to be important, I feel. Even if we move away from this location, I wouldn't be, I guess, surprised if she comes back in some form or another. 
or we learn more about her through another source. Something like that. Last comment here, and easily the longest here from Airwave 2K2. Uh, episode 27 adapts Fern Staff, the third exam, and part of Ziri's instincts. This first paragraph here is a little bit, um, I guess, insular to last week's stuff, so I'll bring all that back up again. And in this paragraph, I guess, yeah, sure. Um, so my argument last week was, if the overall conclusion of this arc going forward is simply we cut off every character, <laughs> every other thing we've learned in this arc, and it's just getting a license, then that feels a little bit undercooked and a little bit underdeveloped, and I was waiting for the next thing to happen. I think the next thing is happening through characters like Yubel and through characters like Dankin. Right, those are setups. Um, as well as we say here, a deep dive into the magic system, more about Flem and Freeran's past. There is stuff going on. Don't take it as a major criticism or anything. I was just, I'm a little bit surprised that it went as smoothly as it did. Right, I don't have an example offhand, but normally when an arc starts with a pretty general, unexciting premise, something else happens and we chug into overdrive by the end of it. You don't see a lot of people just writing a straightforward exam arc. And in a lot of ways, we didn't. The, the exam was never the drama. The drama's between the characters. And I think that's where it gets a lot better than the way I described it, which is probably a little bit unfair. Yeah, Richter had a total face turn. I was happy about that. Um, very relatable, Freerun using that pride element to get Richter to do what uh, she wanted last episode. I uh, definitely think we're seeing a Dankin Richter connection now. If we check back in with Richter for whatever reason, I wouldn't be surprised if he's even going into Imperial Mage stuff. That wouldn't surprise me, right? Again, divorce from context, the third test is lame, um, but we're not divorced from context. It has a lot of the Zire Freerun baggage into it and their personal emotional connections, their personal creeds and that kind of thing, kind of butting heads here. Um, and the mind games are pretty good. And I think that you're kind of stupid if you think that it's bad just because it doesn't have a big action scene in it. I had more than enough big, spectacular, over-the-top action um, with the free run versus free run stuff. So I didn't need another test in that way. I was just surprised at the structure we went for. Yeah, and the whole sequence with Siri uh, and Fern is fantastic. Um, I like how the the story's written there <laughs> for, for how basic that sounds. But um, just... Everything makes sense. Everything that every character there says makes sense. And it rewards people that are paying attention, that can notice things before they happen and stuff. And I think that's the sign of a good show. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in agreement. And yeah, as I said last week, putting the two chapters together with Fern's staff and the I am Miss Freeran's student stuff by the very end, it just makes perfect sense. That makes a holistic anime episode, something I've probably talked about close on 10 times during this whole reaction set. It's one of my major plus points for the show that they understand how to do this. And then, yeah, we're ending with the comment about feet fetishes. So, sure. <laughs> I mean, anime is going to anime. We talked about that last week. But hey, man, that's enough about foot fetishes. We're on to that kind of final episode here. Um, predictions. There was a little... I guess episode title last week that said it may be embarrassing if we meet again. I'm thinking it may be embarrassing if we meet again and I hadn't done blank. I think that's where we're going with this. This is my motivation to do this just in case, say, Freeran meets Himmel again or say, Fern meets Hyther again and they're judged on their actions somewhat, right? It would be embarrassing if you saw me and I hadn't fixed this. Something like that. That's where I think the direction we're going is. Generally, episode titles are said in the episode somewhere as well, so pretty good shot. If I had to talk about structure of the episode, I would think that the first half is probably going through Sire test result stuff still, and then maybe some Stark stuff and a little bit of wrap-up, and then maybe a general direction where to go next, and then a little bit of a bit of a bow on the entire season. That's what I would say. Um, where did the season start? Of course, all the 
flashback stuff with Freeran and Himmel and getting acquainted and all that kind of stuff, right? So it's probably going to connect back to there, to the general premise of why we're going on this journey. And without any further ado, I think I'm just going to watch that episode now, but not without my shill stuff. So if you like the video, consider liking the video. If you like the video and you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel. Comment below anything you thought about the episode, anything I could do to improve my presentation, comment below. I'm doing follow for follow on Twitter, so follow me on Twitter if you'd like me to follow you back. And the Discord, join Discord. Love Discord, 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 Discord. I guess I should say I've pretty much planned what I'm going to watch next. It's going to be Hibiki Euphonium, everybody. Wow. Crazy. Um, starting with the recap movies, because I've already seen the first two seasons. But I just need a refresher, so we're going to do that. Um, and then move into stuff I haven't seen, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll keep everybody abreast of that, of course. Um, and we'll start that next week. Should should. And yeah, with that random tangent aside, let's jump into that episode 28. Radio, I have episode 28 up there ready to go. Ziri's kind of looking at me with some shady eyes, so looking forward to that, I guess. Um, same stuff as always. Subs, please. Picture in picture in the description below. And we're just going to jump in. We're just going to hit play and finish season one of Free Run Beyond Journey's End. Radio, three, two, one, go. Oh yeah, 24 minutes and 23 seconds for that one as well. Might be. Aren't we boring you? Because oh, she already knows what's going to happen, of course. All according to plan. Tell you what, I don't know if it's just like this week because the show ended and that kind of thing. I've been seeing a lot of free run content around. A lot on TikTok, a lot on Twitter and that kind of thing. Definitely, um, I guess, penetrating the zeitgeist, for lack of a better term. Um, the kind of show you see memes about and people understand what you're talking about. So that's pretty good. In particular, there's, there's like this one edit of like free run and Himmel that I do enjoy. I'm an enjoyer of that edit. I remember when I was like, oh yeah, Freerun's evil sister. That was pretty funny too, in retrospect. The show's just good. <laughs> I'll talk about it more what I do overall season summary stuff. Okay, we're straight into this. I'm self made. <laughs> He's crazy. Interesting. Yeah, maybe we do really like feet. I don't know. Shut up. Oh, unless. Oh, hey, we did it, chat. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, talk to me. Oh, yep, great. Just looked at her, actually looked at her too. Yo. Bro, they just intuitioned each other. That shit's crazy. That was such a quick scene. Yeah, because you're the puppet, right? Oh. 
What's up? So he's got multiple clones. Interesting. Oh, I forgot about fucking Wormbill. Have we a bell? True. Pick your battles. I agree. Flower spell. Oh. I mean, you'll agree with that. I love that shit. Give me that murder shit. Yeah? What you got? <laughs> At least she didn't lie. I thought you were cute. Hey, we all passed. Let's go chat. She got way easier on them after our fern. Yeah, get shit on. Never. You're still young. You'll be alright. I know. Yes. Hello, Duncan. Thanks. I oh, know. See you on the road. See you on the road, bud. I can go see my dead wife, or whatever his story was. What are we deciding? Pretzels, cookies. Are they even pretzels? They're in a pretzel shape. Oh, hello. Hello, Lao Fen and Den Ken. Oh, tea party. Why not? <laughs> okay. Stark and Den can be like, how do we know each other? Like at all? At least Fern's having a good time. I'm not eating your sweets, old man. Yeah, very British type um type cookies. Yeah, great. Okay, they're they're doing this. Yeah, when I I'd rather a um a cookie than a biscuit, I feel. What's wrong? Oh, you're calling him Oji or whatever? Yeah, sure. I'm loaded. Hmm. Sore spot? Yeah, okay. Interesting. This shit's sad as fuck. Hmm. I see. Yep. Hey. Thanks. <laughs> I didn't try to do that, but I did. Oh, yeah, I forget you're old. 
I agree. Let's get back to aiding. Why not? All right, what else are we doing this episode? Oh, yeah, okay, you're doing the spell thing. Grimoire. Gonna help the lady with her oranges? But I'm holding books. Oh. What a nice guy. A base level kindness. We love it. I know, you, but you're, I was holding books. I can't help. Nice. I agree. <laughs> Complain to me about it. Okay. Odd. Well, not odd, but you know what I mean. Oh, is that a thing? Okay. Oh, slaughter demons? Tell me more. Freerun loves that shit. Hmm. Thousand Mirror Tower. Sure. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember. Um, uh, Mikasa, your, like, little friend. I remember. It was nothing. Touching lives, that's all it's about, eh? I might pause on that frame. That might be a little bit of where we're going next. Interesting. Busy or something. <laughs> she said, Get to the point. Okay. Camel fanboy or something. Gotcha. What do you mean by back? I'm trying. It's what the show's about. Yeah. <laughs> It's nice to put a bow on the series, though. Hmm. It's like some kind of puzzle. I'm not supposed to say that. All might ask answer. Um, yeah. I mean, you you literally affected their lives though, and then that trickled down to 
this encounter now, proving him correct. There you go. Okay, great. I'm great that the show saw that. I'm great. I'm happy that the show saw that. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. We'll be okay. <laughs> oh no. For the next thousand years, you reckon? Guess I'll have to go home. Okay. Yeah, you go in and mingle and stuff. Receiving their privileges. I mean, she's a good prospect. She needs time to, you know, establish herself in the league. <laughs> Let's not be too hasty with these things. Oh, hello. I'm here to defeat you. It's okay. We got beef, it's fine. She could discern that too. Interesting. Interesting. Remember the, f the frame of him last week where he looked like shell shocked? Yeah. Interesting. It's almost like he's wasted in an age of peace. Hmm. Okay. Dodge. I was also joking when he said I'm gonna, like, kill you. So, like... Also, what an odd motivation. Anyway. I mean, you already started it. Put a hole in my Versace. Yeah. You should watch the show. <laughs> you may understand this better. Yeah, hypocrite. Okay, I'm happy we're talking about this. Flamme.
Claire. Oh, the golems. Oh, my God. This show's smart. <laughs> Maybe not golems. Are they golems? You know what I'm talking about. The guys in the bottles. She's a big sundere or something. There you go. Isn't that nice? Okay. Hello. Well, we can get moving then. Mm, don't ask. Okay. Odd. Oh, he's he's been like a good boy. Okay, that's good. He's been keeping busy. <laughs> I love this guy. The training arc will never say. Is he a bit taller? He looks a bit taller. See through people's clothes? Not at all. Ah, washing powder. Okay. Practical. We like that. The laundry spell. Hey Siri, can I have some fucking Tide Pods? <laughs> what a crazy thing to say. Yeah. Get shit on. I'm free run student. Oh, you too. Hello. Okay. Alright. See you in three years then. Okay. It's very cursory goodbye, but sure. Obligatory, almost. Anyone else on the bridge? No. Okay. See you guys later. I agree. Yeah. She loves a good Irish goodbye. Oh. Okay. There's some reason why. Well, here comes the episode title, right? Oh, with the ED starting to. Yeah, there you go. Indeed. It would be embarrassing if we meet again. Oh, when? When is crucial. When we meet again, or met again. You know what I'm saying. Oh, it's special ED, too. Even if it's just this shot. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty epilogue episode, which is generally something I enjoy. Um, and yeah, I'm 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 in agreement with myself. This was this was good. Um obviously <laughs> I'm not like finishing it and like catching my breath and I'm, you know, at the crazy spectacle I just saw. It just made sense. It made sense for the for the show to end here. They timed their run pretty well. Everything felt like it had a point. Yeah. And I mean, talking to more overall stuff for the series as a whole, um, everything had a point, which is one of the most impressive things about it. And I'll go into an extended anecdote about that, and it's 
closest contemporary, let's say, in my mind. Oh, my friend. We love a cyan. It's closest contemporary in my own mind, anyway. Not that the shows are all that similar. Yeah, got a little post credit something. Yeah, okay, sure. It was implied. Sure. Oh, probably means season two, you would think. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to, like, stop now and, like, talk about the episode again. What do I normally do? Analyze. That's the word. <laughs> I'll be back in a second. So, season one of Free Run Beyond Journeys and In the Bag reacted to content made. And uh, where did we end up on it? I would say pretty damn positive. Um, I'm not going to go against the grain here, um, and I'm going to join the chorus of everybody else on planet Earth saying that this show is really good. On a base level, again, we're going to do straight up like IGN score stuff, um, where it's like, hey, let's break it down into the categories of what it's good at. It's literally, I could not fault it, outside of a few scenes, animation-wise, the art's generally really good. Um, music's really great, courtesy of Evan Cole, of course. Um, what else do they normally say? Uh, b -b 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 art, music, animation, story. I enjoyed the story. It's probably the best aspect about it. Um, the structure there within and what is revealed when and the two timelines going on and one thing reminding us of another and certain concepts building upon themselves in really cool ways and characters being internally consistent within these concepts. Again, the example of that I keep bringing up is the idea of, uh, I guess, mana concealing and how that's kind of permeated through a lot of the show since it was introduced. And it seems like a pretty innocent concept at first and it ends up being one of our overall strategies, right? Um, speaking to Freerun and Fern's combat style in a very real way. A difference between expectation and reality, which we prey upon is uh, the idea there. And um, yeah, that kind of introduced and then again, permeating through the rest of the show is really, really good. But overall, just this sense of everything in its right place is, is the way I feel about this show. Not a foot went wrong. It's like if good came down to science. And in that way, it's a show that I've struggled at points to feel emotional about. Um, and I don't even know if this is criticism or more of a personal thing. I wouldn't say Free Run is a messy show. And that is both a compliment and a criticism. It is clinical. And in that clinicalness, it's kind of clean. And I like my shows a little bit unclean, put it that way. Um, just, it feels like it has a bit more personality to it. I mean, compare it to, and I hate the dealers because I feel like I talk about him on the channel like a lot. Nisio Sin, who's like swinging for the fences with everything and um, may like, may miss the ball completely, may go right through to the, we would say slips catch, but I'm sure there's some other apt uh, baseball metaphor which we could use. So it may swing and miss, but sometimes he swings and he hits the biggest home run you've ever seen in your life. Or even compared to somebody like Naoko Yamato, who I also think is clinical, but not as clean. I feel like there's a little bit of her in it, a little bit more. I I didn't really feel a distinct, uh, I guess, auteurish, authorial voice here. But in that way, it also appeals to everybody. So... I don't know. This is, what, this is what I mean, like, good comes down to a science. And I'll, I'll say the, the show that I am thinking about the most when watching Free Run Beyond Journey's End. And it may be kind of ironic, right? Considering the whole my anime list hubbub that everyone's doing at the moment. I think it reminds me a lot of Full Model Alchemist Brotherhood. Um, <laughs> very, very impressive that they're doing this on the first run through as well, as opposed to Full Model Alchemist. But... They just understood the story they needed to tell. They understood the time that they needed to tell it. It doesn't really have pacing problems, like at all. So does Freerun. doesn't have any pacing problems. Just runs at about the speed you think it should run. Um, has a ton of really good episodes. Has a ton of really good characters. Uses all of its characters. Everything that is set up gets paid off in some way. Clinical. Scientific. I gave Fulano Alchemist Brotherhood a 9 out of 10. I'm probably leaning similar here but neither penetrate my favorite shows, right? I have shows that I would consider worse that I like more. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? And I hope it don't come across as too negative. It's it's really good. It's really, really good. And you know those times when I turn to the camera and look in the camera and say, this show's really good, you guys. I meant it every single time. I really did. And I don't feel like I do that a lot for other shows. So I must be doing something right. I don't know why my feelings are as complicated as they are, but they, they kind of are. Again, we'll, we'll go through this episode another time. Maybe that'll get me back on track a little bit. That's not the button I hit. The button I hit instead over here, and then I just hit play. <laughs> Losing my mind, by the way. Uh, just while we're here, personal favorite moments, personal favorite episodes. I think the show peaked in a lot of ways through like episodes like 10 through 14. I thought that were really, really good. Um, I did talk about how the pacing's really good, but we kind of suffered a little bit through this arc. Uh, just kind of all the characters introduced eventually made sense and eventually started to pay off. But you you threw a lot of this at once, right? Um, when we're trying to find the birds and we're just kind of getting used to Kane and Lawane and stuff. And it's just like... So that stuff was fun. Uh, the start of the show is obviously very strong. Gets you hooked. And some personal favorite one-offs. Uh, anything that was like Fern, Stark, ship related, I really enjoyed personally. I liked the old guy by the tree. The old knight guy. I thought that was pretty good. Um, I liked the sunset episode which, or Sunrise, I think it's a Sunrise, uh, which is one that probably doesn't get a lot of traction outside of when you actually just watch it. And yeah, remember when we were, we're hearkening back to the, the, the flower field and finding the flowers and all that kind of stuff? That was fun too, very early in the show. Personal favorite character, I mean, it's hard to go past Freeran, but I do really enjoy Himmel as well. Um, Stark and Fern are fun, I like them. It's good when the main characters are good, I feel. Um, Yubel as a side character is a star as well. I hope she is in the show a ton more. I think she's really, really good and really, really interesting. Um, even uh, Glasses Kun, um, Land, right? That's his name? I think it's Land. Um, he's grown on me a lot too. I think that his power is actually kind of awesome. All right, now I'm going to actually stop yapping. Um, before the credits, we just get a little bit of preview, or preview, replay from last week. Um, just... Hey, she passed. Fern passed. Very, very cool. And then we're kind of just straight into it. Um, we have Denkin, the first one here to get tested by Zidre. And Denkin's reputation somewhat precedes him, right? He's a self-made military mage who rose to be the most influential in the Northern Lands. Your reputation precedes you. I honestly wish I could have met you when you were still young. Demonstrating Zidre's, I guess... <laughs> predilection for age and hating aging and wishing that humans could age longer and lots of stuff right it's against her worldview um she just wishes that you were an elf basically she has no interest in burnt out ashes that being an older gentleman who still wishes to uh attain that status or so she believed she sees a little spark here when you saw me you thought about how you'd fight me right Denkin admits, only for a moment. I immediately abandoned the idea, though. And yet, this is enough for her to instantly pass the kid. So, shout-outs to Denkin, he passes. Spoilers, basically everybody passes that's left. Again, compared to, I guess, Kane's reaction, which is the baseline, right? Which is, like, in awe of her, shocked, blah, 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 blah. That's the people that didn't pass. The ones that could not even imagine a universe in which they were fighting. They were scared shitless. <laughs> Those are the kind of people we don't want being first class mages. And now we have you. This is a very, very, very interesting interaction. Let's break it down here. So you, Bell here, <laughs> quietly confident, I'm guessing. Look at the eyes. And contrast with the meeting with Denkin, right? So a lot of like not looking at him, not looking at him, not looking at him basically at all the whole time. A little bit of a side eye there, a little bit of a side eye, a little bit. The one you really want to compare it to is Kane's, where... She didn't even get a look in at all. Immediately, she's here, immediately side-eyed, and then eye contact, you pass. Like, what do you mean? You obviously pass. You knew you passed too. So taking what we know about why the reason why Dankin passed, right, which is I could fight her and I could win, you're intuiting that she is supremely confident that she could beat you. That's what I'm saying right now. Even if it's a fool's folly or whatever the hell, right? I think that she thinks that she can beat you, and that is huge. That is huge for your, uh, I guess, judgment of her ability. Yubel's like, hmm, but we didn't even speak. That's weird. And then is like, like I even needed to. I don't need to speak to you. And you know that I don't need to speak to you either. So yeah, very, very quickly, 
that plot thread is ticked off. Hey, I thought that would be a longer conversation. Not needed. Ziri and us are all on the same page. Yubel's pretty special. Cool, so then we have Land. Land, Land, you know who I'm talking about. Glasses Boy. Glasses Boy sends in one of his clones. Is this some kind of joke, says Ziri? This is the first class mage exam. What kind of idiot never even sets foot into the examination grounds? It's like, what do you mean? I'm over here, my flesh and blood, haha. <laughs> And I guess this is a retroactive reveal for the rest of his content. He was never here. He was just at home, sipping on some tea. He was never in any danger at any point. And this is something that even Yubel, with all her great intuition, couldn't intuit. She still kind of thought that he was here somewhat, right? So when <laughs> when she gets heroically saved uh, in, the, uh, in the dungeon, right, in the crypt, it's actually just another one of his clones. Okay, cool, fun. And it, there's levels to the intuition. So Zira is on another level when it comes to intuition, right? Um, I know that you're over there sipping tea. A level above you, Bell, even. This is a fantastic shot as well, turning to look in the general direction of where Land is staying right now, enjoying some tea right now. Then, yeah, the super zoom, 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 zoom. Oh, I'm surprised. You're probably one of the first people that have, like, seen through this, seen through this guy's a little bit. And, yeah, because of this fact, uh, Zilri believes that he has a bit of spunk about him, that he's got guts to try and, like, attempt this. Therefore, he passes. Shoutouts. Next up, we have Weirbel, somebody who I forgot about in the lead-up. I just thought that... He wasn't in the show. Any I, I don't know what I thought. I just forgot about him. He's very combat oriented, apparently, which we know. Um, he looked at Zide for one second and made a snap judgment that um, I can't defeat her right now. It's not a judgment made out of fear. It's a judgment made out of logic. However, the fact that he can pick his battles isn't fact enough alone for him to be able to pass in Zide's eyes. What's your favorite spell? Classic question. Just don't say flower spell and you'll probably pass here. And here she gets the answer she wants. Magic is a tool for killing. I neither like nor dislike spells. They're tools for killing. They're either effective or ineffective. There's no emotional side to it. It's just business. And she loves that. Another smirk from her. She loved that shit. Again, it's interesting that later in the episode we have the two characters having a conversation. The two characters that got asked this similar question. What's your favorite spell? Freerun has a favorite spell, where Bell doesn't. One's a, one's a little bit more emotional, one's maybe a little bit more cold, or emotional about different things. Maybe we can read into that when we see this conversation a little bit later again as well. And then this one here is just laughs, just funny. Metode, she's here. Siri asks the question, what did you think when you first saw me? I think she already knows the answer here, right? Just wants to check if you're game enough to admit it. Yeah, I thought you were small and cute. What's wrong with this year's test takers? You pass. So I think what I'm reading into this as is <laughs> she was game enough to admit what she thought and was confident enough and not scared and all these kind of things. She said what she wanted to say. She wasn't intimidated. Um, and maybe that's reason enough to pass. That's my read on it anyway. Just a nice little bit of comedy there for the for the bow in that particular scene. Speaking of scenes that put bows on larger scenes, we have this with uh, with Zensei, right? Remember the whole thing about, oh, you're too accommodating Zensei. You should have culled them down further. This is what a pacifist test does and all that kind of shit, right? <laughs> I was wrong. Uh, Sire admits she was wrong here. Sensei, we actually have a really good crop this year. We have a bumper crop. Don't... You, you were fine. I apologize for the, what I said before. They're all actually pretty good. And then, yeah, we all kind of go our separate ways in the wake of that. Um, this is interesting. I wonder if you two are going to continue to hang out. What is, what is Land's goal, even? What does he want? What is your goal? Are we going to see these two again? Probably. But in what context? Are they going further north? We're going to have to see. Because you're going to follow you. I think that's how that's going to work. Freer and Fern are reunited. Um, Freer and almost yawning as uh, as Fern was passed, right? She was supremely confident in the fact that she would pass, right? Um, Fern's doing a little pose here. Remember the stupid walk she did? That was fun. And gets head pats from Freer and for her, for her efforts. Great job. Denkin calls out to Freer and says, I only made it this far because of your help and just 
kind of thanks her without saying thank you. To gather more context about that particular interaction with Denkin, we follow this scene with Stark and Fern as they're buying some baked goods. She can't decide which one she wants or which one she wants to buy for somebody else or I don't know, she's a bit she can't really choose. However, when she goes to grab the one she wants, um, Lao Fan is there as well, buying some sweets. <laughs> Planting, uh, we've seen Lao Fan with sweets a lot, payoff. Here she is actually buying them. It's very small, but it just makes sense. It's another, it's another tick in the show's favor. And we have a very British afternoon tea type job here, right? Very, you know, like a shortbread type biscuit these feel like, right? Instead of your more, you know, sugary, big chunky cookies or something right and some tea very very british i'm glad that the show picked up on this as well stark and denkin have never interacted to my knowledge so of course he's just gonna be like do you, do you know each other who is this guy why is he buying us sweets <laughs> it's gonna be weirded out by the whole thing but again this is denkin being kind of awkward right uh, in his own way, trying to thank uh, Fern and by extension Freerun for her hard work, well, not her hard work, for inspiring him and that kind of thing. I think Stark's reaction later is because of this particular line, thanks old man, thanks Oji, Oji-san, Oji-san, yeah, thanks, thanks old guy, pretty informal. Um, he should have shown some level of formality in Japanese language and honorific stuff if he was talking to an imperial mage or whatever the hell he is. However, Duncan doesn't take any big offense to this. Again, he's trying to thank them. And then the conversation takes a little bit of a sadder turn, right? Uh, Fern basically asks, you must have something better to spend your money on. What about your grandchildren or something like that? Well, he has no children or grandchildren, and to stop myself from just reading every line in continuous detail, basically there was a marriage, he married pretty young, found the love of his life and all that, it was all very sweet, but she was sick, got sick, um, lost her battle when she was in her mid-twenties, and Dankin never remarried or never found love again or anything like that, so that's depressing, right? And this is probably going to be more important stuff later. She was the daughter of a frontier noble of the Northern Plateau who was defeated in a political dispute. Okay, so wife is of some amount of importance, but also that family is on the on the down. They just lost a lost a battle, a political battle. So back then, that's when Denkin was in need of both wealth and influence, right? To help his wife, I think. And the battle to find that legitimacy was the only way I knew that I could save her. However, the magical association with Sherry runs, it, it wasn't out in time for me to participate or do any of that kind of thing, right? He felt he was in a powerless position because he couldn't attain a level of authority and respect through an organization of legitimacy, right? With that legitimacy, he could find power, and with power, he could potentially find medical attention or a cure. That's the way I'm reading it at the moment. But we contrast this, right? I felt powerless in that moment, right? And what has all this Imperial Mage stuff and all these, like, backstabbings and ramifications and machinations and that kind of thing, right? What has that actually done for me? Has that gotten me the love of my life back now that I'm at my most powerful and respected level? Even now that I'm a first-class mage? Not at all in the slightest. It doesn't make up for that. It's not what this life, even in real life, is about, right? It's a pretty classic little moral, but it's demonstrated pretty well here, I feel. In that kind of pursuit of not feeling as powerless again as feeling powerful, he used magic as a tool to resolve political disputes, with maybe also a, a reference back to the initial political dispute that led to what happening happening, or at least didn't help. Again, we'll save. This will be explored in more detail, I'm sure, later on. But that's where Free Ring comes in. She was the one that taught me how to love magic again. About how fun it could be. Like, think about all the fun tactics she used throughout uh, the battles we had, right? With, with Dankin and Dankin looking on and blah, 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 blah. She's just having fun with it. And that, you know, brought him back to why he started magic in the first place. Of course, Denkin is old enough to remember the deeds of the Party of Heroes as well, and that directly influenced him starting to become a mage as well. It's just, he's got a lot of love for Freerun, um, and he should tell her that himself. Yes, tell her that himself. Yeah, shout out to Denkin, he's cool. Now we check in with Freerun, um, as she is hitting up all the grimoire joints in, uh, in Orsurst. 
Uh, she's got a big pile of books, but she manages to notice that a lady has dropped her oranges. Oh no. And this is great, right? So she looks over there. Man, somebody's in need of help. But I'm carrying all these books. I can't help. And then, yeah, help from an unlikely source. Well, Bill's like, hey, I'm going to help you. And then as a result, casts judgment on Freerun, which makes sense now that we've heard his little story, of course, right? That how he idolized Himmel and the little actions that he did and how they rippled out and changed the community and all that kind of stuff, right? I would think you, one that was closest to Himmel and saw him firsthand, would follow a similar creed. However, I didn't want to drop my books, <laughs> which is fair enough. Freerun mirrors the audience here a little bit. I'm surprised that you're as nice as you are, Werbel, considering one of the first times we saw you, you tried to kill at least some portion of uh, Fern's party um, the in that first test. Werbel's like, oh, that was all fun and games. Except you, Bell. She can... <laughs> I'll kill her if I get the chance. I'll probably make the world a better place. Not a better place for me, though. See, I definitely forgot about the element of it, which is, hey, I get this spell, whatever spell I want. It's tantamount to a wish, considering Sire's big uh, knowledge base when it comes to spells. Um, so he's going to get a big, powerful spell to protect his hometown. That was his whole motivation for being here, basically. Then Werbel gets into describing motivation some more. He's from a frontier town up north, inspired by Himmel and his battles against all these big bosses. When I was a kid, I loved the big grand stories of adventure, but that's not what the elderly talked about, the village elders, right? They talked about how he helped with sheep, and he helped like clean up stuff around town. They didn't care about the big stories with the big spectacle, with the big stakes, with the big everything else, right? Because they're just working harder in their own personal lives, right? They don't see the world as widely, right? Think about your own life, right? I'm sure you're abreast of current events and that kind of thing and big stories and blah, 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 but they're not the most inspiring thing in the world to you. They're just not. It's not my everyday. It doesn't affect me personally in the way that other things do. The stuff that impresses the individuals here is the stuff that helps them out personally and that they're personally invested in, that impacts their small, narrow view in their life. Um, and I think that is that is true. That rings true. Um, and that's why Himmel's so cool, because he does the small stuff too. These people have designs, question mark. I wanted to pause on this because I felt like this is maybe like future stuff. Because these are all demons, right? Demons attacked his town, blah, 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 blah. I know this is years ago now, but it was still after the Demon King had been defeated. So you're still kicking, whoever the hell you are. Yeah, I feel like you don't design that character without us seeing him later on. But he just had a helmet on, maybe you do. I don't know, this show's weird in a number of ways like that. So we explain here, after Himmel died, a few remaining demons started to act up and attacked his town. Right? And then I finally understood what the elders were talking about, right? My town doesn't have the significance of any of these large stories I've talked about, right? But as soon as it became personal to me, as soon as I became invested just because I was living here and invested in the lives of the people around me that I see every day and how they're affected, I understood what they were talking about a little bit more. So in that way, Werbel finally understood the, I guess, importance of uh, Himmel and how good he is. At this point, Freerun's basically saying, yeah, but can you get to the point though? And yeah, all he's trying to say here is that the small stuff matters. The small stuff is the reason why I'm here today and why I passed the test. And then yeah, turns and says this to Freerun. You should treasure the encounters that you have. Death isn't the only goodbye in this life. However, Freerun would know this better than anybody. Yeah, this is what the show's about. This is very bow on the show, you know? Her whole thing is that she has to treasure every encounter now because she's been... <laughs> it's been shown to her when she doesn't do that and then she loses people and doesn't get to say what she wants to say to certain people that that has ramifications and that hurts like hell. So she doesn't want to do that again. That's what the show's about. And then we get a little anecdote again to just kind of end the scene um, from way back in the day with Hemel. They're just kind of helping this guy with his sheep, I think, or at least waiting for them to pass. And the rest of the party's getting impatient, and we're kind of quizzing Himmel as to why we have to do this, why we're, you know, taking so long to defeat the Demon King, right? That is the big, that is the big story, right? Think about what Werbo was saying. That is the big tale that was weaved, that he defeated the Demon King. However, he still won't ignore the small stuff. I won't ignore those in need in front of me. And we literally had evidence of this last week, right? <laughs> the small stuff changes the world. It really does. Little acts of kindness every day, right? And I know it's cheesy, but follow me here, right? 
Freerun noticed a child in the forest that was scared and did a little flower spell. And literally that domino effect, you know, like the domino meme, right? The small domino to the big domino. That like defeated the Demon King. That brought an age of peace. And you could see this as a formative experience for Himmel. It's a creed which he preaches, not to this day, but through his entire life. Again, the small stuff matters. And Freerun was the first one that showed him what the small stuff does, right? And how to do the small stuff. At least that's my canon anyway. I don't know. I... Uh, Really good. I like that a lot. Then we're firmly in the second half of the episode here. Fern's going to get her privileges. She's going to get, she's going to graduate basically. She gets to bring plus ones. Freerun's not the biggest fan of attending, considering the bad blood between her and Sire. And is kind of relieved, like contrast the two faces, when, you know, she gets kicked out. Essentially, the story here from this bespectacled young lady is that Miss Freerun is prohibited by Miss Sire, right? I don't like you. I don't want you here. I don't want you to see any of this shit. Um, I'm banning you for a thousand years. <laughs> Which seems excessive, but again, we know elf stuff. I also like uh, Fern here getting quietly kind of upset about it too. So yeah, Freerun's going to wait outside. Stark also takes the opportunity to not join in. I mean, other people's graduations are kind of boring. I'm there with you, Stark. We then have a small chat with Stark outside as we're waiting for Fern to get her privileges. Just kind of commenting on how much Fern has grown and that kind of thing. And yeah, I mean, based on your track record, she probably will, right? More famous mage than me. And that's a nice touching scene and stuff about them, you know, happy for their friend passing and graduating and that kind of thing before we're interrupted by one learning. Hello, Lernan. Lernan's motivation is weird. Let me talk to you about this right here, right now, right? Lernan wants eternity. He wants to be remembered. He wants to be passed down in history. He wants to be one of the famous mages, blah, 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 blah. And because he has the talent to do so, his only way to access such a thing and only way to make sure that Flam gets remembered as well is also to kill Freerun. It doesn't matter if I'm the disastrous person that murders Freerun, or dastardly is probably a better word there, I will be remembered and that's good? Question mark? You're odd. Um, but also I think we have a good, I guess, answer to the question there uh, from, from the Zire anecdote by the end of the episode. After speaking for a little bit, Freerun notices that Lernan can see her fluctuations. He's incredibly skilled. The peaceful era doesn't suit him. I mean, you said it. I'm an old-fashioned mage that only knows battle. If I'd been born during the era in which we fought the Demon King's forces, I would be the most famous mage in the world. He's pretty fucking strong. Uh, he's not suited to this age of peace. So now we're asking what he wants, and then this is his motivation. Let me just read it verbatim. The only one of Miss Sire's students whose name is remembered is her first. The great mage Flam spoken in fairy tales. Once I grow old and die, yet another proof of her existence will disappear. Of her existence? Of Flam's existence? Proof of her existence. Is this a Miss sub? Should this be my existence? Why do you care about Flam? Why do you give a fuck about Flam? Also, I remember Flam, and I'm alive. Why would you try to murder the person who remembers Flam? Is this... I th feel like this is subbed very poorly. I feel like this isn't his intention. I don't want her to be alone in the future, even if it means going down in infamy as the killer of the legendary mage Freerun. Her to be lonely in the context of Siri's students who are remembered. Is that what you mean? That's a really esoteric reason to fight somebody. It's fucking strange. Um, anyway, I just said it. Now we fight. He seems pretty serious and strong and stuff. He puts a scratch on Freerun as well, which is, you know, got some amount of skill if you're able to do that. Uh, piercing barriers too, right? The defensive magic, it got pierced there. And basically Freerun just tells him to shut up. Shut up and listen. We don't need to do this, it's fucking pointless. Because yeah, there's no reason for you to go down in history because you will be remembered because Zirde will remember you. Now we get a little anecdote. So, I'm happy we brought back the flowers thing because it was a little bit of a red herring last week. It was a very obvious thing that contradicted what she said, right? Big, uh, big old clue, big old deception. You say you don't like flower spell, but you have flowers that are made by magic? What gives? Well, I care about Flam, and Flam probably made these flowers, right? These magic flowers. And yeah, we get a little bit of a heart-to-heart -heart here, right? 
Flem was a failure. Despite all her talent, she failed to reach my heights. I taught many students after her. Most died without ever reaching my level. But it's strange. They were students I chose on a whim, but I can clearly recall each one's personality and their favorite spell. The one we see here is Lernan, and he's got the... Again, I call them golems. You know what I mean. Homunculi, almost. Um, yeah, remember how he had the bottles with the, with the guys? These are these guys. Smart show, callback, reward for people that are paying attention. It's just good. Yeah, and that gets him to, I guess, calm down a little bit. That being learning, right? Just kind of, hey, you will pass into history and prosperity and all those kind of things through her. Just be thankful for your master and that kind of thing, even if she's kind of a sundere about it. And then in that same way, we have a more healthy master-student relationship here, right? Kind of demonstrating how it should be done. And then, yeah, truly, we are awkward. What? Elves, humans, emotions, master-student relationships. Either way, I'm with you. Yeah, both you and I. Definitely at Siri there. Oh, good. And now we're officially on our wrap-up shit. First, I'll talk about this fun story that's happening in the background. Basically, Stark being besties with everybody and being very helpful around town. And this weird training arc that he went on that we'll never say. Just good gag, good gear. Also, more of that Himmel stuff, right? Him following that kind of Himmel creed and just doing everyday tasks for people. Very cool. And oh yeah, very important thing that I forgot about. What did what did Fern essentially wish for? What She had a wish in front of her, right? She could wish for anything. What did she wish for? She wished for some freaking Omo or a thing of like Surf or any other laundry detergent brand I can remember that I'm not thinking of right now for whatever reason. <laughs> Yeah, she's got clean clothes, and that's great. She thought that laundry was a hassle, and now has a spell that gets laundry. And she's very proud of herself, look at that. And yeah, of course, Freerun's proud. This is a very Freerun move, getting access to the most legendary thing in the world and just picking something fucking random. Well done, Fern, that's my student. We love that shit. And yeah, of course, Zero is not going to like that. We saw before in the episode her predilection for spells that actually do something, so... She thinks that this is a waste. <laughs> Reminds her a lot of Freerun. She hates that shit. And then just wrapping up here, uh, this is a pretty obvious one. We say a short goodbye here, or a somewhat insincere goodbye, and that kind of sets up our final scene, right? Just kind of walking off in the other direction. A goodbye that's kind of not really a goodbye. I'm happy we bring this up in comparison to the one with Zion as well, a character which the audience was at least clued into thinking would be in the party long term, right? Like, why was it a quick goodbye? Why'd you do that? And as always in Grand Freer and Beyond Journey's End logic, it's because Himmel did that, right? And this is just a fantastic note to end a season on before we don't see these characters, like, for a while, right? We're not seeing them every week like we have for the last half of a year which is crazy. Not me specifically, but you guys. It's, hey, say a short goodbye now. Say an, like, kind of informal goodbye. You know, see you next time. Blah, 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 blah. Something like that, right? Instead of a big, tearful goodbye. Because it would be embarrassing if we saw them again. And we do intend to meet again at some point, right? Like, even us, Himmel's died. We intend to meet with him again. Height has died. We intend to meet with him again, right? So same with Zion. Just a short little goodbye. I'll see you again. I know I will, right? Well, Freerun specifically probably knows she will because she can, like, live a long time and stuff. The others, not so much. And of course, we're using the episode's title in that, right? It'd be embarrassing if I met them again after saying such a tearful goodbye. So, I'm not going to say a tearful goodbye. I'm just going to say, see ya. I'll see you next time. And yeah, gr great choice here. We just kind of fade in the ED during this time as well. Just a great note to end the season on. I think it's really, really good. Tearful goodbyes on our style. After all, it would be embarrassing when we met again. And of course, it's no mistake that we've got an all-white background with Himmel kind of fading into it. We know where this means, right? We're going to meet Himmel again at some point. Hooray! You know. And then unique little ED, just a fun little piece going back through all the scenes we've seen. Right up until, like, now, which is pretty rad. And a few little epilogue -y things. Maybe some final goodbyes there. Even Matode and her weird crew get a little goodbye. Yubel all on her own? No more land? Okay, maybe. Craft? Craft mentioned? Crazy. Sign here's cool. He's just on the beach just chilling. I don't know where the beach is, considering how far north we are, but, but I digress. And I believe that's uh, Flam's grave. 
kind of one of the final things we see there, whispering our lullaby to come back home. And yeah, I mean, I think we've finally ended here. Just kind of like, you know, her explaining that line and then blah, blah, blah. And then this, the journey to end continues, which is soft confirming a season two, even if we don't have anything in stone yet. Or if you wanted to be a little bit more cynical, you could say that this was a little bit more of like a, hey, go read the, go read the manga, smile. But I choose to believe that it's soft launching a season two, because why wouldn't it? It's like one of the biggest shows, biggest shows at the moment for sure. And I've successfully yapped for way too long. Um, but I guess like overall stuff again, like this show's good. It's obviously really good. It's written really well, looks really good, blah, 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 blah. All that kind of roundup stuff I said before, even if I'm not loving it, even if it's not hitting a favorites list like some others, the craft here is insane. <laughs> it really, really is. Um, and if you're a fan of any kind of anime at all, at any level, you will find something to like in it. And I think that shouldn't go understated as well. It's it's wide appeal there, and it's uh, accessibility. You could watch this. It it doesn't have much of the Japanese isms to it. You need to know a little bit about um, some honorific stuff if you want to get the most out of it. But other than that, there's not a ton there. It's pretty accessible in comparison to some other stuff I watch sometimes. Um, yeah, I'm gonna stop the video now but thanks for watching free run with me it's been really fun and stuff and uh yeah i hope you join me for whatever's next um i should be finishing konosuba at least relatively soon as well then there'll be another poll um as well as i'm planning something in may but we'll see what that means in due time <laughs> we'll say um uh shill stuff uh if you like the video like the video if you like the video and you want to see more subscribe to the channel Comment below anything you thought about the episode, anything I could do to improve my presentation, comment below. I'm doing follow for follow on Twitter, so follow me on Twitter if you'd like me to follow you back. And the Discord, join Discord, love Discord, 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 Discord. If you like my channel and that kind of thing, you can also request stuff in the Discord that I should react to next, and it'll be added to polls and that kind of thing. So do with that information what you will. I'm definitely ending the video now. I'm very tired. <laughs> but thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. Bye-bye. See ya. See you next time Journey's ending or whatever the hell. <laughs>